seen science like this since not the not the collisions collisions part two revenge of the boys looks like they bounced back hi i'm dr bay and this is basically science i love science because it's in everything we do eating Breathing, walking, and even blading. That's right, there's a science to Beyblade. Let me show you. Yeah, woo! Yeah. Gotcha. Welcome to the lab, Bay fans. This is Basically Science, and I am Dr. Bay. Not a real doctor, just a beaker full of dreams and bad jokes. As our introductory sequence suggested, this is Collisions Part 2. And today's topic is gravitational potential energy. But I can hear heaps of you asking, Dr. Bay, what is gravitational potential energy? Simply put, it's energy. What kind? Gravitational. The higher an object is, the more gravitational potential energy it has. But, because it's not moving, it's not energy we can see. Not yet. At the moment, it's stored energy, hidden away. And so we call it potential. So, if an object starts off at a lower height, it will have less energy in it as it falls to convert into motion energy. But, if it starts off at a higher position, it will have more energy in it as it falls. And remember from last time, more energy means a bigger collision. So before, when I dropped those two balls, the ball dropped from the higher height had more gravitational potential energy. It had more energy in it when it was moving, and so when it hit the ground, it had a bigger collision, and then it bounced higher than the ball dropped from a smaller height. Collisions aren't always bounces though. If I were to drop something gooey on the ground from a small height, it won't have a lot of gravitational potential energy in it to convert into motion energy, and so when it hits the ground, its collision will be smaller. But if it's dropped from a higher height, it will have more gravitational potential energy in it, and then its collision, or splat with the ground, will be much bigger. Alas, Slamming into things has nothing to do with Beyblade, so I guess we're done for today. Come on, it has everything to do with blading. Follow me to the next segment of the show. If we want to measure the gravitational potential energy of our Beyblade, we're going to need some kind of, I don't know, gravitational potential energy measurator. 4,000. And one, behold. If gravitational potential energy is real and not just a figment of my overactive imagination, then that means that a Beyblade launch from a higher position should have more gravitational potential energy in it. So when we launch a Beyblade from the higher track, it should have more energy and then travel further. As always, let's be sure to limit our variables. We're going to use the same Beyblade, the same launch power, the same track to make sure that we can keep friction and aerodynamics the same each time. Three, two, one, let it rip. Here, Beyblade launched from a lower height manages to travel a little along the surface. Not bad, but not too far. But when we launched on the higher track, even when we used the same launch power, our Beyblade traveled further. And that's because it had more gravitational potential energy in it when it was launched, based on its height. I guess you could say the lower track fell short. <laughs> that 
that's gravitational potential energy in a nutshell. But this episode's collisions part two. Where are the collisions? Collisions! <laughs> Oh, now that's more like it. <laughs> if we're gonna measure the impact gravitational potential energy has on our collisions, we're gonna need some kind of target Beyblade. Oh, that was convenient. Let's launch our Beyblade at this target Beyblade down the same ramp from experiment one. We should see our Beyblade launch from the higher height, traveling down the ramp with more energy and then hitting our target Beyblade in a bigger collision. Three, two, one. Let it rip. As I expected, our Beyblade launch from the higher height had more gravitational potential energy in it. So it traveled down the track with more energy and hit our target Beyblade in a bigger collision. And so it knocked the target Beyblade further. I know that horrifying wailing anywhere. That's the sound of our bonus round siren. So, brainstorm. How do we measure how big our collision is? And how do we look fabulous while doing it? If we can measure how much glitter is in this container before and after impact, we should be able to measure the difference in collisions between a Beyblade that's launched from a higher height and a lower height. Three, two, one, let it rip. Three, two, one, let it rip. I don't know what I expected. We have our results in hand. The Beyblade launch from higher up had more gravitational potential energy in it, and so its collision with our glitter was bigger. And my lab got messier. But I like it. What did we learn today? We learned lots of things. Objects have potential, just like all of you. I'm sorry, what? Gravitational potential, and oh right, yeah. Uh, objects have gravitational potential energy, and that means the higher an object is, the more energy it has when it falls. If they crash into something, more energy means a bigger collision. That collision could be a bounce or a splat or maybe even a burst. It's also important to remember that there are limits to how we can use gravitational potential energy. Sure, launching from a super high starting point means your Beyblade has a lot of energy, but it might have enough to leave the stadium altogether, and that's not helping anyone, except your opponent. So, it's best to avoid. You've all been amazing lab partners. I'll catch you next time when we tackle or get tackled by inertia. I don't want to jinx anything, but Boy, am I glad we got through that whole episode without any really big... Good, good, good.